All right, Foot Moto here with the Aprilia RS660. Uh, my first review of this was uh, not that great. And uh, now, though, I've had it over a year, and so I thought I'd do more of a one year synopsis of everything going on with it, how much it costs, and some of the things that uh, I've done to it, and some of the things that uh, work, and what might the future lie for it, and uh, that type of stuff. So here we are uh, in Austin on a fairly good road. The uh, ice house is closed down. So let's go over the few things. Um, it's got GP shift. Um, I put new Michelins on it. I did not like the Pirellis that it came with. Uh, we did the MIV. Italian style uh, aftermarket can. Uh, they also make one that sticks out here, has a bracket. And I decided to get the low slung one to uh, stick with the uh, overall profile. I upgraded the master cylinder brake to a, uh, is it the DST model? Which has a little doohickey in here and you get to switch between 20 and 19. Or is it 20 and 18? Uh, and that changes the feel on it. Uh, I really like a stiff brake, a little touchy. just feels better. And then after you get that initial bite, then you squeeze it in, and it uh, feels real good. Uh, one of the things I'm going to go over, too, which is at the end of the video, is I'm going to go over the costs of a low, slide, low side. Uh, as you can see, there's still one piece left that didn't get replaced. And the factory doesn't seem to uh, want to be shipping that part. I'm not sure why. Uh, but that the other damage was to this, uh, to the headlight, and that's about it. These frame sliders saved any issues with uh, any of the uh, covers, swing arm. Uh, this, you know, just went up like it's supposed to. That did its job and this didn't even touch so the low slide was mostly just on the front here and it just so happened the edge of the track hit the light right there and popped the light and there's this piece right here that is meant to break to save any hit to the front from messing up the uh, chassis or the triple tree or the forks so that's a quick synopsis of that not a whole lot done to it uh, which is why I'm kind of contemplating whether I should do a lot with it and make it much more track focused or if I just uh, leave as is and keep it a street bike. Start it up. So down here at this switch, you get three modes. Commute is a preset for you. And you can go into here and it tells you the presets for commute and dynamic. So those two you cannot fiddle with at all. And then individual, you go down here and, whoops, yeah, you don't want to back out. You always go forward. So you have five custom settings. This is uh, engine mapping and one is the most aggressive this is engine braking one being the most aggressive traction control I have it on two uh, one is basically barely on obviously and then zero is completely off which is what I would do at the track but out here with sort of the rocks and you know oil and a few things on the road I'll keep it here just to save your butt a little bit uh, this is automatic wheelie control that is turned off for now and ABS turns off the rear one turns off the rear ABS so your front only uh, as you can see you can change that oh and I just disabled that so you go here always go forward never back out that closes you out of the menu so there you go and then you can not adjust the top as you can see everything is on in commute on dynamic, it kind of gives you a middle of the road 
uh, which is not too bad for running around town. I'll run that when the bike is cold as well with cold tires if it's cold out and I don't plan on getting the tires up warm. And then here's the other one that a lot of people miss is hold this down, go into vehicle, and you go to road, you change that to race, back out of there, and now you have two new modes, challenge and time attack. So challenge is preset for you, and it is almost as aggressive as say I have on the individual. Uh, it does leave up the traction control and the mapping in the middle. And then time attack is fully customizable. And again, go forward, never backwards. And then if you want to turn that off, and that would be the most aggressive setting you could put this bike on with as little electronic interference as possible. And in time attack, I don't know why they called it that challenge versus time attack. They could just have called it uh, race and custom. Uh, and then what they do in the uh, race dash is they move the lap timer into big and bold, and they move the miles per hour down small, and then it gives you your settings up front so you can kind of quick glance and see where you're at. And you can jump between these two on the fly. So say you're on a warm-up lap, you go into challenge with the tires cold, and then uh, say you're all heated up and you're ready to uh, time attack, right? You go into time attack mode. I mean, maybe that's why they named it. And then in uh, this mode, you go in here and you have your uh, lap time. So my last track day, I did 31 laps, at least recorded laps. Uh, and it records your top speed and your lean angles on each side. And uh, then what to wipe that, you hold that down. No, that's not how you wipe that. You go into lap timer, you go into reset, you go into yes, make it green, back out, and they're gone. And that's how you start over. Wow, those twisties rudely interrupted my conversation with myself. What the fuck? That was fun though. The CBR was going pretty good. There's just too many cars on the road to really push it right now. But yeah, that was fun. What the hell is that thing? 